Look at these images of tasty food. What we want to do today is build an image classifier that's going to recognize what type of food this is. This type of project is called image classification and the approach we're going to use is something called transfer learning or fine tuning where we're going to start with a state-of-the-art model of Google Vision Transformer. We'll apply our data and tune that model to this particular problem. This is a very common approach in image classification. Along the way, we're going to make this easy by using the Hugging Face Transformers package and the Public Hub. So stick with me, take a look at the link, pull up the Colab notebook, and join me in this. All right, let's get started by building out our vision model on the Indian food. I have went ahead and loaded the Colab notebook. If you're doing this the first time, I think Colab is a great place to start, partly because they already give you GPUs, which is something that you're going to need for running this. So you can see I've connected and have my kind of notebook running with it. So let's go through and we're just going to run this all. I'm going to run this all in real time with you. So that way you can see exactly what should be happening and what are the outputs that are going. There will be times that I will kind of fast forward because some of the times, some of the steps take a while. And so if that happens, um, I'll slow down and let that go. All right. So the first step is we're just going to install in some of the background packages we need around data sets and transformers from Hugging Face. The next step we're going to do is we're going to log into the Hugging Face Hub. And this is partly because part of this, we're going to be pushing a data set to the hub and saving it there. We're also going to be pushing our model to the hub. So we want to use one of our hub accounts and log in to that. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my Hugging Face account and grab my password. You can see here under settings, I can go and look at my access tokens and I'm going to go ahead and just copy that as well. And then from here, we'll go ahead and run the code here to log into the notebook. I'm going to go ahead and paste this in and log in. And you'll see, it'll tell me my login is successful and that it's been connected. So again, you might have to sign up at Hugging Face to get an account if you haven't done that step. And then there's just a little bit more um, of some packages, the Git LFS, which helps us with large files and, and manipulating and storing and sharing those. We want to install that helper. All right, so those are the preliminaries. Let's move on. And now we're going to start by working on importing the data set. Now, what I'm starting with is I'm starting with a data set that I found on Kaggle that has lots of pictures of Indian food in about 20 different classes. You can see here the various classes and the number of files that are in each one. And a lot of times you're gonna organize your image, image projects like this, where you'll have different classes and a folder for each class with the images inside it. So what I've done in this case already, I've already downloaded this file from Kaggle and I've uploaded it and put it into my Google Drive. If you've done it differently, you might have to kind of follow a different order um, of stuff. And again, this is the optional part. If you want to go to my existing data set, you can go ahead and start from there. But this is for if you're starting from scratch, how you might do that. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to Google Drive. You'll see here I'm going to Google asks me for all this stuff to let me connect to them. We'll go through that. And then we're going to connect to it. I've placed the Kaggle images here in the zip folder within my personal drive. This step is going to copy it from my personal drive into the temporary directory that we're going to be using in the Colab instance. And so you can see here, it's copying all these messages over. It takes a minute or two to kind of copy all these files over. And that's where I want them local for the Colab instance, because that'll be a lot faster for when it's running um, and building models. All right, so let's go ahead and pull down to the next step. So now what I'm going to do is I've put those into that a nice structure format. If I want to look at kind of the format that they're in, I can go here. And if I look under my temp drive, you'll see here's that food image directory that I just put. 
I can look at the individual files inside there. So now we're going to take this file and we're going to load this into data sets. Data sets. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of do this here. And the reason we want to load this into data sets is data sets will give us a nice structured object that makes it very easy to both build our existing model as well as to put out on the Hugging Face Hub. So the next time we do this, we don't have to go through all these steps, but we can start with a data set that's already configured and ready to go. So you can see here we've went ahead and kind of loaded that down. I'm going to go ahead and create a, a split here in the data set. I just said 15% here, the 0.15. You might want to change that. Now that I've done this, I want to show you the object we have. So what we have now is an object where we have the majority of our information is in a train directory. And then we also have some that we've now, that 15%, in the test. And you can see the features here are the image that it is and the label. Now, where did the label come from? Came from that folder name. And I'll show you how we can get that later. So now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this information, all these images, and I'm going to push them over to the Hugging Face Hub. And what I'm going to do is store them there. I'm going to actually, I can choose between making it publicly or private. I'm going to go ahead and make this publicly available. It means next week, if I want to go grab this data set, I can go grab it. If one of you want to grab that data set, you can go grab it as well. I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you exactly kind of where this sits on the Hugging Face Hub. I can just go into kind of my account here. If I look under my Registics account, if we look under data sets, you'll see now I have this Indian food images. And that's where that data, I've just pushed that up there, made that available to everybody. All right. Now, this data set is about one and a half gigs. So moving it around, pushing it up to the internet, pulling it down can take some time. And there's some tricks we could use, such as streaming, um, once we've pushed it into the data sets to do that. But let's give it a second here to kind of finish up and then I'll show you how we can continue on. Now, at this point, I'm going to pretend that I'm going to start by grabbing the, the images from the public hub. So if you skip that previous steps where I had marked it optional, totally cool. You can just start with the ready to go data set that I've already got up there inside the Hugging Face Hub. So this is the command to download it. So at this point, I'm going to re-download those files down. You'll see it's a healthy download, one and a half gigs of information to pull down. So it can take a little bit of time the first time you pull this down um, to do that. So we've pulled the data set down, but now let's take a look at it. Let's double check to make sure it's kind of what we expected there. So I'm just going to look at the train split, and then I just put an arbitrary number of 400 here. You could try a different number as well. You can see as soon as I pull that out, I get back the X, which has the image information and the label, right? What the class is of that. If I want to kind of look at the image, I can pull the image information out and look at that. So this is kind of 400, and I can see now I have a nice Panipuri picture here as well. If I want to see what label, how this has been categorized, what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and just show you here is how we can get all the labels that are in this data set. You can see there's lots of different labels, but traditionally what happens is it's just stored as the number. So if I just run a little bit of the script here that converts the integer out and I can get the class name for it. So you can see here that this is identified as Panipuri. So we're able to get the data set. If you want to play around with it more, you can look at various images, make sure that data is exactly what it is, what you expect it to do. All right, next, let's move on to actually starting to train the model. There's a number of steps here. Some of you might be like, hey, can't I just drop it in and just press a button? No. And the reason why is because everybody wants different goals as part of their as part of their training. So what I want to highlight to you are some of the critical decision points where using code and having flexibility comes into play when you're building this. The first is, what metric are you going to use? I've used accuracy here. 
There's many other metrics like log loss that you could use if you wanted to for evaluate kind of your models. We can take a look at the data where I think we've already done this before where you can see kind of how that dictionary is split. This is a little helper script we run right here that just basically gives us dictionaries for the ID to label so we can convert back and forth between the numbers and the labels very easily. Okay, the next step is, and this is a little bit advanced for folks kind of who might not are familiar with working with images, is we're gonna first take, take, um, take our information and we're gonna do some pre-processing to these images. And so I'm going to go ahead and run here, and this is going to give us a feature extractor that will help us take those images, convert them into numbers that we're going to then use for doing some transformations. Now, this code here has various augmentations for the pictures. And kind of what you can think of these augmentations, you can see some of the names of them, like random resize, horizontal flip, tensor, um, center crop is they'll take our existing picture that we have, but then slightly do slightly things, like do a horizontal flip to it, resize it a little bit. And the idea here is to add more information, more examples to our data set, because our data set only has a couple hundred pictures. This will help kind of multiply that data set, give it more examples for the computer to learn from. So it's a very common technique that's used when building um, image models. And it's a well-known technique for improving the overall model performance. So don't feel like you have to understand what's going on right there, but as you kind of start building more of these, you'll see that's a common technique that we that is um, often used. We'll split our data set into kind of a train and test split. We'll use the existing kind of, um, the existing split we already have in the data sets. And then this is a command here that will run that pre-processing that we've already kind of established up there. Once we do that, and now when I look at a specific element inside my training data set, you'll see I have the image, I have the label, but now I've added in the pixel values of that, right? That, that changes that I've made there. All right, now we pre-process the data. Let's go towards training the model. Now, for training the model, we're going to follow the traditional approach in image classification nowadays, which is using transfer learning, where I start with an already built pre-trained model, and then I just tweak it a little bit with my images. Lots of material out there on kind of transfer learning or fine tuning. And what I'm going to start with here, you can see is I'm using transformers. I'm going to use Google's vision transformer as my starting point. Why did I choose this? Didn't necessarily have to start here. There's many others starting points you can do. I started here because my buddy Nate told me this was a good starting point and so I trusted him and I ended up getting decent performance out of this. But for different types of use cases, you might wanna choose a different type of model. For example, if, if you care a lot about latency and you want something that's gonna give you quick predictions, you might take a kind of a smaller model that has that trade-off of a little bit of accuracy, but gives you faster predictions. A lot of choices that you can think about and make as you get familiar with this. All right, so let's see. We've got that model. You can see here we've downloaded that model so we can kind of start working with it. The next thing we're gonna do is just set up some of the training arguments that we'll want to, to establish how to kind of build these. There are a lot of training arguments out there. You'll see some of the common ones here that I put in there. This is, again, an area where you'll learn over time to where you might want to tweak it to improve how fast something trains, how accurate it trains. You'll see there's some common things like here we've set the batch size, how many images are going to go through. If the, your model, if the model runs out of memory, you might be like, oh, I need to lower the batch size. On the other hand, you might say, oh, there's plenty of memory. These images are small. I can increase the batch size. There's a lot of trade-offs here. I've set this for four epics to train might take longer for some problems. I've set a learning rate here of, you know, 0.002. That can vary. Sometimes you need, sometimes it's kind of a, a kind of your learning rates 
might be too slow, might be too fast. This is something that you'll study along the way to understand how well it's going. So let's go ahead and kind of set those training arguments, pull those in. Here's a simple script that just basically computes our metrics. It uses that the accuracy that we set earlier, just runs a compute job on those predictions. And then here's a little helper script that just batches things together because at this point, what we want to do is batch together our pixel labels and values um, together. And then we're gonna just pass this along to our trainer. And you can see here in the trainer, we establish things like we point out exactly what the data set we're using for training, what the evaluation data set is, what the tokenizer is, and that information. So let's give, go ahead and let that run. And this is just getting set up to do our training. And you'll see it's cleaning everything up, getting everything up and running here. All right, two and a half minutes later, that information is all set up. And now this is the big one. This is now we're actually gonna run and train our model. This will take some time. So plan this out ahead of time. Um, I think it takes about 30 minutes or so to run on the typical kind of GPU instance that you get with that. But you'll see here, we'll run this we're gonna go ahead and then save the model, log the metrics as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this and save this, but just so you know, it's gonna take a little bit of time um, to do that. All right, 30, it's been 32 minutes and the model's built and you'll see over time, as it's built out more, the accuracy has increased for this model. So one step we can do is just go ahead and evaluate that model on this. So I'll go ahead and run this. And it simply uses that trainer, but then we just evaluate it and kind of get the final metrics on our eval or test set here. All right. Here we go. We can take a look and see the overall accuracy, the loss, how long it takes to run. All those pieces are right there. If I'm happy with this model, now what I can do is I can push this up to the Hugging Face Hub so it saves all those model artifacts, puts that out there, so that way you can, if you want to you reuse it, as I'll show you later, to get predictions. Um, all the, that, if you want to reuse it to get predictions, you can do that. Um, so I've got some a little bit of information here, like I want to tag this model as image classification, you know, give it the data set name as well. But I'll go ahead and kind of run this. And now it's taking those little model artifacts, the, the binaries here for the PyTorch, my pre-processing configs, grabbing all that from my local Colab notebook, sending it all the way up into kind of the Hugging Face Hub. And give it a second here and it's kind of doing that, and then I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like on the hub. And so if we go, now you'll see, this was automatically created just by pushing it up. I didn't type any of this language in myself, but you can see now we get the loss, the accuracy in this model card that's up there on the hub that anybody can now go and use that if they want to. All the pieces for the models here are uploaded and placed in here as well. Let's talk about inference or predictions for kind of using the model. I'm gonna start by just grabbing kind of a image that I've already kind of put out there on kind of the public internet that we are gonna just use to test the model. And you can see I can pull it in, take a look at that raw image. And so that's what we're gonna to use to test the model. Now to grab the model, remember I showed you earlier like how you could use grab that use in transformers code. That's all I'm doing here is I'm telling it, hey, this is the model I wanna use, my fine-tuned model. Go out, grab it from that public hub, bring it down into kind of whatever notebook that I'm using. And that's exactly what this does, is it tells us, hey, here's the feature extractor and the model 
that I'm using. Now the next step is you have to prepare the model. You have to prepare the image for the model. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of run the model through, run the image through the feature extractor, get it as features, go ahead and kind of run a forward pass now of these images through the model. And then once I do that, I can then identify what the actual class is. So feel free to kind of poke at these individual lines as well. So that's one way. And that's kind of if you're setting up your own inference pipeline, that's might be how you, you might want to do it. But there's other ways. So one is using the pipeline API object. And I'll go ahead and kind of show you how we can do that. You can see here, we've told it we want to go ahead and use pipeline, the image classification one with this particular model. This will go ahead and take care of the pre-processing and forward pass for us. And so this is really kind of the preferred way I'd suggest for people to kind of do it. I'm going to go ahead and then pass in. I'm going to grab that same image that we had earlier, pull that into my pipe, and then you can see here, I'm able to get back the predictions here, not only of the top score, but all the other kind of scores, the top five labels as well. You can do this both using a model pulled from the Hugging Face Hub, but even if you have a model locally, you can see here where I've just grabbed the model as a model, where I've already had kind of put that down locally, I can use that as well. So that's how you can kind of use that model, be able to plug that in as well. So, oh, so let's just kind of recap everything that we've done. We've built a fine-tuned image classification model for the Indian Foods data set. We went through, started with images and folders, created the data set object. Once we had that data set object, we then moved to taking a existing pre-trained vision transformer model. We set some parameters, some training arguments for how we want to train the model. We trained that model, evaluated it on our test set, made sure it was doing well. And then I showed you last how to get the prediction. So I hope you find this useful. Let me know if you do, and I'll keep these coming. Thank you.